You need not leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. You need not even listen. Simply wait. You need not even wait. Just learn to become quiet and still and solitary. The world will freely offer itself Unmasked, it has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. I take a very cynical point of view. I think that being cynical is a positive value. I think that nobody should trust anybody else. I think that all people are assholes until proven different. And I think that if you take that point of view, you will be disappointed less in life. Don't expect friends. Don't expect fun. Don't expect a good life. Don't expect anything. And then if you get something, it's a bonus. what I do is based on reporting. I see something and I report on what I see based on my point of view. My point of view is not a normal point of view and I tell people about what I see about it. They can agree with it or they can say it's bullshit, whatever. I don't care.
through psychedelics, one frequently gains a much heightened appreciation of the worth of nature and the beauty and value of her creatures. Even one such experience can make a person more conscious and concerned with the ecology of our planet. So I say, psychedelics should once more be taken seriously as intellectual and aesthetic instruments that can help us understand not only what consciousness is, but what we humans really are and what we can become in our relation to the wonder that is nature. My visible impressions were dazzling and apparently magnified. I heard distinctly every sound in the room. I lost all connection with external things. I existed in a world of newly connected, newly modified ideas. With the most intense belief and prophetic manner, I exclaimed, nothing exists but thoughts. The universe is composed of impressions, ideas, pleasures and pains. Five years ago, uh, in Mexico, uh, I took uh, Mexican mushrooms, the so-called magic mushrooms in Mexico, and uh, I learned more about my brain and its possibilities, and I learned more about psychology in the five hours after taking these mushrooms than I had in the preceding 15 years uh, studying, doing research in psychology. And since that day, I've done practically nothing except a continuous exploration. Uh, it was triggered off by accidental experience. Finding out what are the range and limits of consciousness and attempting to develop maps and languages for charting these uh, incredible realms within our own skull. And not just of what's going on around you and inside of you, but also consciousness of where you came from and the long uh, telephone wire of history, which goes back two billion years, which is buried somewhere 
inside uh, your brain and mine. We are uh, neurologically and biochemically in touch with uh, uh, thousands of generations that came before us. short-term memory loss, like you forget what you were talking about, and the third dangerous side effect, I forget. <laughs>
basic preachment is do what you want to and don't do what you don't want to. Figure out what you want to do, figure out how to do it, and then do it. That's me. That's happiness to me. side of the situation and look at it from a totally different perspective. It opened up for me uh, vast areas of new thinking. It broke me free uh, of, of a mindset that was not healthy. It allowed me to see around things rather than just at it. And it was a very valuable perspective to me.
this whole effort to bring the psychedelic experience back into prominence is an effort to empower individuals. And it's not done through organizing. It's not done through vanguard parties or cadres of intellectual elites. It's done through just walking away from all of that. Claiming your identity. Claiming your vision, your being, your intuition and then acting from that without regret. talking about freedom, not being free, but telling you that they're free. They're a group, and they all dress alike, and they talk alike, and they look alike, they love alike, they hate alike. They're all alike, and they talk about individual freedom, the individual, freedom of the individual. They're not free individuals, they're a herd who are constricted and hate anything, any kind of change. Everybody in the world, like, you know, deals, pushes something in some way. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you cheat a little on your income tax or you, whatever, you corrupt, you're corrupt, you see? And a man who becomes productive is corrupt. A man who's creative is like a child.
A 16-year-old lad apprehended in the act of staging a holdup. 16 years old and a marijuana addict. Here is the most tragic case. Yes, I remember. Just a young boy. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. Nationwide on the iHeartRadio app. Q1043. WAXQ. New York. My first recreational drug, I suppose, first illegal recreational drug was marijuana, and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I laughed a lot. Time seemed to slow down, so there was more of it. I just liked the entire experience. I knew it was illegal, of course, but it didn't bother me. Uh, but I enjoyed it, enjoyed it so much. I, I did what I think is a fairly rational reaction. I smoked another one because I enjoyed it, and another one. Then acid came along. While it was still legal, I mean, I took it every day for a year in 1965. It's not really, it wasn't then a recreational drug, it was almost some kind of cerebral masturbation. Since that first joint really felt that the law prohibiting people from smoking marijuana was fundamentally wrong and sinister, and I still believe that, uh, believed it all my life.